Yeah, we're back. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech on a given Tuesday, and uh, it's the nine o'clock. Oops, make that the ten o'clock block. And we're talking about ancestry, making ancestry work here on Community Matters. And uh, my brother joins me, Gene Fidel, who's a uh, professor of military justice at NYU and has been involved in military justice uh, for 30, how many years, Gene? How many years? 30, <laughs> 50, 35, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 I'm sorry. Yeah, 50. I don't want to make you younger than you really are. <laughs> and, and, and his experience in military justice as a national expert qualifies him to talk about ancestry. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. So you got involved. I don't know if I could call it a hobby or something more than that. It's a passion for you. And my question is, why did you get involved in ancestry? Well, you know, from, from day one, when you didn't know much about it until what you know now, what, 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 what drew you to it? Well, uh, I think, Part of it was that, uh, you know, unfortunately, and uh, you know this, uh, uh, our family uh, was sort of a hodgepodge. I mean, we, we knew we had cousins, we had, but, but uh, and uh, uncles and aunts, and great uncles and great aunts, but how it all fit together was mind boggling. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, our, our parents were not. Uh, uh, careful to help us understand how it all fit together. Um, I think uh, when, uh, I, I think it, it was uh, only a couple of years before our father died that I finally sat him down and interviewed him uh, and, and made notes and made very rudimentary drawings uh, trying to uh, identify you know who was related to whom and how and interestingly he he had very good recall uh you know if anybody who has uh, gotten to become a senior citizen knows that you can remember things that happened 50 years ago or 60 years ago better than you can remember breakfast the day before um but i i was quite uh and i'm increasingly startled actually uh, uh about the depth and uh, basic accuracy of what he was able to tell us, even about not just his family, but our mother's family and uh, the extended families all around. So that was, uh, that was very satisfying. I, I've held on to those uh, very rudimentary drawings that I've made. Uh, and I do refer to them from time to time. And occasionally I'll stumble across something that he had wrong or uh, things that, let's say, he was economical with information on. <laughs> and I think that's a very human trait. I, uh, you know, at times it's just infuriating, but, uh, and I'd love to have a second chance to sit down and say, say, Dad, uh, you know, uh, was there something more that you wanted to tell me here? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but that's that's not going to happen. So uh, uh, by and large, it's it, it's uh, a, a very rewarding, I'll say hobby, but it's more than a hobby. I mean, you know, people collect stamps, they collect autographs, they collect signed baseballs. Uh, uh, every uh, I have a dear friend who collects automobiles. <laughs> um, but but this is this is satisfying, and if you're if you have that sort of infantile completion urge of wanting to paint in a, uh, the painting, uh, you can keep at it. And by the way, you're never going to finish. That's the other thing. You're just never going to finish. Dang, that cousin just had another kid. You know, or dang, that kid just got married or whatever. Uh, so, you know, if you don't take it, if you take it seriously, but not too seriously, there's this a, a, a happy medium there. Uh, and I, I think I'm probably at that point. Uh, at, at times you think, well, this is kind of diminishing returns. But then you start thinking about it. And, you, you know, you as a lawyer and litigator know this, that uh, you, you, uh, you get curious. 
well, just one more question, Mrs. Vandergrift. You know, just <laughs> I, I just well, whatever did happen to Uncle Max? <laughs> so uh, you know, it's uh, there are worse ways to spend your time, and uh, I know people, and it, it's just interesting. Uh, 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 there are people for whom none of this is of the slightest interest. People who are living in the moment. Uh, I wanted. I wanted to mention. I yep. see a sign curve here. You know, our father's generation. Um, you know, family was very important to them. That's why you could go to him and at least get some information. You know, beyond his personal family and experience, he knew. He 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 visited with them. They talked about it. Subject of discussion. Um, you know, I remember that. And uh, so, in that generation, it was a community of family. But all the stories that went somewhere along the line, you may have a better handle on when somewhere along the line, the generations in at least our greater community and maybe the country and maybe the world, you know, began to forget all that. The family was not a community and it was nuclear and you didn't stay in the old neighborhood. You went anywhere and everywhere you traveled. You got distracted with a million things about career and, you know, academia, whatever it was, and you didn't think too much about family. So in that period of the generational shift, there wasn't much going on in terms of interest in family. And you say, a lot of people don't care about it. And I think it's that generation that forgot about it, doesn't care about it. Now, enter Ancestry.com and 23andMe. I don't know if there's any others. There might be. Oh, there um, are. Oh, there okay. are. Yeah. So, so now they're here. They're all here at the same time, kind of. They all arrived the same, roughly the same time. Um, and, and what I find really interesting is that it's a nostalgic experience. They're helping you connect with things that are nostalgic. They're helping you jump over that the, the generation that didn't look at this and finding the generation one generation ago, two generations ago, that did look at it. And now you can connect up and you can rebuild the family community using these programs. I mean, that to me, that's the attraction of it. And from what you say, to you, that's the attraction too. Oh, that's absolutely right. And uh, of, of course, you know, having a computer file or something, you know, in the cloud is, is not, uh, you know, let's be, let's be blunt. I mean, that is not the same thing as having meaningful uh, relationships with your kin. I mean, it's the meaningful relationships that are the real, the genuine article here that we should value. Uh, and I, I think the value of the genealogy programs, uh, aside from the obsessive compulsive dimension, uh, is to facilitate uh, rebooting those relationships. And sometimes, of course, it's too late, and that's tragic. Uh, and and sometimes things are irreparable. Uh, sometimes uh, you may be willing, but your second cousin once removed may think, you know, the family wasn't so nice to my Uncle Max. <laughs> and I want to be as far away from the family as, as possible. But that doesn't uh, stop you because I think one of the elements here is, you know, you can build this schematic from various directions. So if this particular member of the family with the Uncle Max is, is um, you know, not happy with the family, wants to distance himself, um, there's other ways to find out about him. And that I think that's a special opportunity um, for the technology involved. Why did you select Ancestry as opposed to 23andMe or the other ones you mentioned a minute ago? Well, first of all, nothing is forever. And uh, I've dabbled in various kinds of various of the uh, you know the uh, options. Uh, I've stayed with Ancestry the longest, but for example, I have a file somewhere that connects to Ancestry uh, from a vendor called Family Tree Maker, uh, which was a resident file, a resident program that they then connected up to Ancestry. They made some kind of deal, so you could change, enter data on your laptop or desktop and it would show up on the online version and vice versa. So that's a brilliant, uh, brilliant uh, bit of technology. Uh, 
Ancestry, the key when I was originally shopping was which uh, program had the most information. It was as simple as that. And uh, for reasons that are uh, peculiar to uh, Ancestry, Ancestry was way out in front. And it has to do with the uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, some formerly known as the Mormon Church, uh, which places great store in um, a genealogy for you know, liturgical reasons. I mean, for reasons of religious uh, um, uh, dedication. You know, on that note, Gene, uh, my wife and I, we went to Salt Lake City a few years ago, and we wanted to see uh, what the Mormon church was doing about that. And they led us into a huge room of people who had come from all over the world who were on, you know, state-of-the-art computers at the time, which accessed the Mormon, you know, database. And they could, you know, look at their... Uh, their families, and they could enter data on their family. They could do research on their family, and they would would make a trip out of it. They would spend days um, in this very large room with all these computers. And it strikes me um, about Ancestry or 23andMe or any of the others that the Mormon Church doesn't need that room anymore. Matter of fact, that room wouldn't be nearly as helpful as one of these database programs. What do you think? Are they are they still doing that in Salt Lake City? I, I believe they are. I, I, I mean, I don't know what COVID-19, for example, has done. My assumption is they had to take uh, some serious uh, precautions. God forbid, you know, people show up and then they, it turns out that's a super spreader site. I don't think it is, but, uh, you know, you, you, you would want to be responsible uh, with a, uh, a facility like that. But it's a, uh, it's, uh, as I understand it, a really uh, very uh, user-friendly creative, smart uh, set of uh, at resources, including being able to connect uh, people with genealogists, really experts. And, you know, you, you're going to have to pay for that tender, loving care and people walking you through stuff. Um, but uh, I, I think the need exists for that and will continue to uh, exist. Well, but there's, a, but there's in a, in a variety of in... other, I'm sorry. We live in a world of nuclear families where people don't have family communities to speak of. I mean, you talk about being remote because the other person is on the computer. How about being remote because the other person is on the other side of the world and you're not likely to get to see him or her and enjoy a personal relationship for years and years at a time? And then you can do that virtually. You can do the research on the computer and then you can make a Zoom call to the computer. You know, it's not the same thing as breaking bread together, but but it's not that far away from it. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to point out, by the way, that Ancestry.com, which I looked at this morning in preparation for the show, um, and uh, 23 and Me, which I also looked at, uh, are different, um, just in terms of the way they present themselves. First of all, Ancestry is twice as expensive. Ancestry is um, is 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 built on the notion of finding your finding your fathers, so to speak. And making those schematics and you know identifying all the people for generations upon generations. And as what you do is getting information about their personal stories, which may be the most attractive thing of all. It's a million stories. Now you go on 23andMe, and it's not as expensive. And it talks a lot about the DNA analysis. Um, it talks about you know the, um, the fields that you would find. In a, in a DNA sample um, for uh, you know a, a medical situation, you know I remember a guy here in Honolulu who was selling um, you know a genetic sampling to Big Pharma for testing uh, anonymously, and then one day he said, you know I really moved up in the world. Now I don't send them the specimens uh, in a slide or a test tube. I just I make fields, and I have a few hundred fields to identify every sample of DNA that I'm sending them. And that's all they want. They don't need the specimen gets old anyway. Wow. Um, all they need is these, this database. And I'm sure that's the way, you know, both of these guys work. However, um, if I go on, uh, I'm going to go on it now for a minute. If I go on um, the, the 23andMe, um, I see the, the whole thing is about um, healthier choices, 
eating a healthier diet, uh, set, 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 setting healthy goals, increasing exercise. It's not like a fitness program. That's what it sounds like. You know, and they also do the, you know, the genealogical charts, of course, but they're it's different. Um, they're really mining the DNA and they're giving you advice about your DNA. And I don't see the same kinds of things on Ancestry. Yeah. Um, do, do you use Ancestry for that? Uh, well, I'll describe my tools. Uh, I, I use uh, Ancestry both for genealogical purposes and for DNA purposes. And uh, Ancestry has a, a P.S. I own no stock in any of these companies. Um, uh, Ancestry has uh, an innovation as of a couple of years ago called Through Lines, where they integrate their DNA data and I believe their genealogical data, and they will say, they will present you a list of DNA confirmed connections. And you can find, for people who are in their database, you can find all the people who are descended from your great great grandfather. Uh, and some of them, you know, many of them, depending on how much work you've done in this and the, how intact the family has been over the decades, uh, you know, uh, 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 ring a bell, and some of them don't. Uh, so that's one that's one tool, and it's very exciting. Uh, and and uh, Ancestry DNA uh, has a very large database. I mean, it's a popular program, and the more popular it is, the more valuable it is. The I am also a subscriber to Twenty Three and Me for DNA purposes, and I use it kind of as a check uh, to see, you know, who's popped up and. 23andMe will suggest that a person is a second cousin, a second cousin once removed, a fifth to sixth cousin, a remote cousin, and so forth, a distant cousin. And I can then sort of go, correlate and see if that person has shown up on my ancestry DNA uh, data. So th this, some, some people uh, are in one set of data one program, some are in another program. So you're trying to catch as many as possible. In, in a perfect universe, there'd be only one, but uh, you know, God, that, that would be, that has other uh, dimensions uh, that are kind of scary. Those um, scary dimensions, you know, I uh, suppose you don't know who your family is, your parents, you don't know. Uh, uh, maybe maybe uh, in vitro, um, adopted out without, without a record. Uh, from any place in the world. So right. if I put my DNA in there, um, am I going to be able to find my true parents? Maybe. Maybe. It, it might help if they're in the system. Or, or if a descendant is in the system, you, you may be able to track back if you have a very high uh, shared uh, DNA that would tell you something. Now, some of these things can be pretty interesting. There's been some journalism committed on this subject, but uh, I remember some years ago, uh, I got an email from a person who uh, sent me a screenshot of, I think, a 23andMe screenshot that showed uh, a, a list of uh, women who showed up as her second cousins. And it included my name as well. And none of these names meant anything to me. I mean, you know, second cousin, you, you, in my case, I, I, I'd know the names of second cousins. None of it, none of it resonated. And these four women uh, appeared to be one another's half sisters. And it turns out that they were uh, uh, produced uh, through uh, artificial insemination with the common father. And that common father uh, must have been somebody who was a cousin of mine. I, I, they, they may have thought I was the common father, but no, I assure them I wasn't. But they, you know, they wanted to know, well, did anybody in your family uh, uh, 
work at or study medicine uh, at a particular hospital or a medical school at, in a particular year uh, and trying to figure out who their, who their common father was. Uh, the, the, the woman I was in touch with told me that uh, the four half sisters had gotten together. Uh, they all live in the metropolitan New York area. Uh, they had no idea you know, about any of this. Um, and uh, I, I think it was uh, quite a startling experience. It certainly was for me too. Uh, I've also pursued a number of clues generated by one of the DNA programs or the other, uh, where somebody looked like uh, she was a very close uh, relation of mine, a cousin. Uh, and I have interacted with a couple of people in this category where I, the name meant nothing, whatever. And it turns out you'd hear stories like, well, yes, my, my mother was always vague about you know her early life or her first marriage or something like this, or, or uh, never talked about it. And you know whether it was a uh, a casual you know a one night stand or a uh, a relationship that either or both families uh, greatly disapproved of, for example, uh, you know, and these things these things emerge uh, sometimes quite uh, painfully, I think, uh, but at other times in ways that are very uh, enriching and. Uh, purpose serving well you've, you've created a community with literally hundreds of people that you didn't know before and, and you know talk about resurrecting family communities that has enabled you to do that and, and i know from watching the email that uh, this is a great experience for all of them although i suppose there's a few that drop off the side not not interested most oh. of them seem to be very interested yeah uh, interestingly uh, of all of the relations that I've sort of, uh, you know, connected with. Uh, and it, for our mother's mother's family, particularly, it's a, an enormous clan. <laughs> they were very productive uh, in past generations. Uh, be fruitful and multiply. Um, uh, with a single exception of a couple in their 90s who were uh, probably depressed and you know, dealing with health issues and so forth, and didn't want to have any contact with anybody. With that sole exception, uh, people have been very uh, welcoming and, oh yeah, put me on the list. And, you know, it's, as you know, uh, several times a year, I send out uh, emails to the family with uh, various seasonal, uh, seasonal greetings. Um, uh, the uh, w one real benefit of that is that uh, although uh, in the case of our family, very little was handed down as a oral tradition as to, you know, except the well, towns. The, the, the towns. tradition was not to hand it down. That, that's true. That's, that's true. Pretty much that's true. But yeah. in, in any event, uh, I was able to connect with uh, cousins who, whose uh, parents and grandparents were less parsimonious with information. Uh, one uh, member of the family had, uh, uh, her, her mother had written down a real good history of her subpart of that family, it, which reached back to the generation that was common to all of us. And that was uh, tremendously rewarding. And, and when the time came for me to uh, uh, make some field trips, my you know, my wife and I went to Ukraine uh, one time, and then I went to uh, uh, Poland uh, to visit, you know, the shtetl from which the last quarter of our family uh, immigrated. Um, well, I, was, I was anxious. I was anxious to share the fruits of those yeah, roots sure. trips with cousins. And I, 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 I think people appreciated it. I hope they did. But even if they didn't, I did. I, I just felt, oh. you know, okay, I'm I'm a little better situated. Well, you're uh, enriched than I was. Yeah. You're enriched. I think so. It's the stories of people who actually you have a kind of interest in in knowing. But I wanted to ask you one other question about. But, but hold that. hold on before you do. Uh, what is interesting is there is clearly a spectrum 
there are people who, uh, for whatever reason, uh, uh, feel that uh, you know their personal lives began with themselves or with their emancipation from their parents. Uh, or with a move or going away to college or uh, going into the surf, Wh you know, whatever it is, there were people who want to sort of start everything again, whether it's assimilation or whatever, personal frictions, it happens. Uh, and, and the last thing they want to know, at least for a while, is who cares about great grandpa? <laughs> and at the other end of the scale, you have people who uh, are quite, and I don't mean this in a, in a, in a, a, a negative way, but basically fanatical about it. I mean, dedicating enormous amounts of time that is very rewarding activity for them. People who are really burning to learn more about, learn as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, you know, uh, I, I have a, a sister-in-law who's an anthropologist. Well, not surprisingly, uh, She's quite interested in this stuff, and she has become one of the active genealogists in uh, her part of the family. Uh, so, you know, what what motivates people could be a variety of things. Uh, yeah, so um, earlier we talked about uh, what happens if um, the person on the other end, the you know, the missing link, so to speak, in the family tree, the schematic, um, isn't isn't avail isn't on the system on any system. Uh, and That's so, right. and, and, and furthermore, that if you talk about the, you know, these ethnic migrations, um, you know, what about countries that are, quote, beyond the pale, end quote, and nobody there has gone on the system? Um, well, a couple, you, a couple of things. Yeah. Uh, for, first of all, and, and whatever program you're using for genealogy, and there are programs, there's something called Genie, G-E-N-I. Uh, there's something called My Heritage. Uh, th there's a host of these programs. Um, whatever system you're using, uh, there's an email function, an internal email function that permits you to communicate with others. Uh, Jewish genealogy is another one that has a wealth of information. But if the other party is not reading his or her email regularly, you know, or is simply unresponsive. I mean, I, I, I've had the experience of sending emails through the internal uh, uh, ancestry system, and you can tell how, how frequent the user the other party is. And, you know, it may be somebody who hasn't gone online in two and a half years. <laughs> you know, so uh, you're, you're not going to hear back necessarily in uh, not only real time, you may not hear back for months or ever. And that's very frustrating. Uh, but I, I want to add one other thing uh, that uh, is quite interesting, uh, I think. Um, there are records. First of all, it's kind of astounding that given the turmoil that the world has experienced over the last 100 plus years, that any records have survived. <laughs> No, World War I, World War II, the communist revolution, the uncommunist revolution, you know, all these things. Uh, it's, it's a miracle. But in fact, uh, you know, public records, which may not be, you know, state of the art. They, maybe they're state of the art in 1875. Uh, but public, it's a miracle that anything has survived. And yet a lot of stuff has survived. Um, in that connection, uh, there, there are records that are not digitized now. They, they're not in English, uh, and they may never be digitized. Oh, who's going to do that? You know, uh, and so there are times, and I, I have done this, uh, when you want to find a researcher in country who will go to the archives, who will check the records, and who can then report back to you? And uh, I, I will say that uh, I'll mention his name. There's a, a fellow named Alex Denisenko, who was not only my archival researcher in Ukraine, but also our tour guide when we made a Ruth trip. Uh, and I learned things and confirmed things that I never could have done without somebody laying eyes on the czarist era paperwork. I have a few minutes left, and I, I wanted to turn to the dark side at least briefly. 
and the dark side uh, springs out of a piece on 60 Minutes, uh, I guess three or four months ago, uh, over uh, Ancestry's sale of your DNA, of the database of the fields of your DNA, and then possibly the sale of those uh, schematics as well. Um, through social media, who knows where it goes, you know, and they didn't treat themselves as obligated to any privacy standard and sold it. This may have happened with 23 and Me Too. I don't know. But, you know, there's, there's certainly a dark side to that. Um, maybe they're not doing it anymore after you know, it was exposed on 60 Minutes. Uh, maybe there are other ways your DNA is getting into the w global profile that each of us have, hither and yon. Um, and I'm reminded also that there were some cases involving, um, involving uh, people who were charged with crimes, uh, who were convicted on the basis of DNA that came from um, these ancestry type um, you know uh, programs, and so when you when you when you put your DNA when you take that swab and send it in when you uh, connect up with your family, um, you may be exposing yourself to uh, lurkers, government agencies, who knows what that do not have your best interests in mind. What do you say in response to that, Gene? Well, two things. Number one, the programs uh, that I'm familiar with uh, do. Uh, permit you to uh, maintain privacy, various levels of privacy, with respect to the data that you have entered. And so there may be personal data about, uh, uh, you know, uh, tragedies within a family that you don't feel like sharing with anybody or causes of death or stuff like that. Uh, so you do have to be alert to that. Um, and of course, if you're uh, if you're on the lam from a bank robbery years ago, I'll give a little legal advice. Don't do a DNA test. <laughs> <laughs> because there's some, there's some vigilante out there somewhere poring over things and looking at wanted posters. And uh, these days it's, it may be good really at, uh, at using these tools in a law enforcement way. So, you know, I think people who, uh, uh, are potentially in trouble with the government uh, w will be well advised to uh, not dabble in this. But for, I'll say, normal people, you know, people who haven't robbed banks <laughs> or robbed the post office, um, uh, you know, as, as long as you're aware uh, that to some extent what you're doing here may become public or at least known to third parties, uh, that's a known risk. It's, it's, risk. A known, well, me, it's, a known, it's a known risk to ride a bicycle. Of course, well, life has you risks. You, you, wear your, you wear a helmet. Then the, the question is well, the benefits and costs. Now, if the, if the benefits in terms of satisfaction and knowing your family, suppose you're a person who's been deprived uh, emotionally of the support of an extended family. Well, that's, that's a pretty strong value. So that's a really considerable benefit that the trade-off is, well, some nutcase may uh, hassle you or, or try to fool around with your credit rating or some, you know, some 21st century uh, hassle. Um, yeah, okay. Do it with your eyes open. But if okay, you want well, to no, no. be part of the family of man uh, in this era, and rather than simply, you know, one person alone in a kind of existentialism sense, uh, then... This is a valuable, remarkably productive tool, I think. So that's my thought. Okay, out of time. My brother, Gene Fidel, I'm talking about Ancestry and 23andMe and uh, all of the possibilities uh, with, with these DNA um, schematic companies, really fantastic that we live in these times. Thank you so much, Gene. My pleasure.